Welcome back, it's been a while. I haven't made a video in a while, but uh, today we're making an AI video. AI is always something that seems to interest a lot of people, and today we're going to make like a real basic implementation of some shooter AI. So this is, um, if you were making a shooter game, you could put this AI in your game and it would be really basic. You're going to want to like edit this to your own game, but uh, this is like a super basic implementation where the AI will attempt to look for you. And um, these yellow spheres that you're seeing are actually my last known location. So he's going to try find me based on that sphere. And you can see now he's searching for me. He found me again. And he's just going to... up. Oh, you got me. So there you have it. And so this is like super basic AI. Uh, I'll show you how this works as well. So in the behavior tree here, he's going to go ahead and start here. He's going to come here and if he can see you... He's going to look at you and then shoot you. If he can't see you, what he's going to do is move to the last location that he saw you at. And if he still can't see you after he's moved to the last location he saw you at, he's going to search for you. And uh, he does this using the start search task, and then he's going to try move to the search location that he's found. At any point during this part of the tree, if he finds you, he's immediately going to jump back here and start shooting you. So I'm going to show you how to implement this in your own project. Uh, if you make a new first person project, I'll show you exactly what I did to get this behavior set up. Alright, now starting off in this project, we have literally nothing here. And uh, we're going to make this folder called AI. And this is just going to hold everything for the project. So as always, if you're building AI, I mean, you don't need the behavior tree in Blackboard. You could theoretically do it without these, but these are Unreal's tools that are used to set up AI. So we're going to make a behavior tree, and typically you prefix it with BT, so BT, AI, car, care, whatever. <laughs> and, um, and then you're going to make a blackboard for that as well. So the blackboard holds keys and different values, and then those values are used over here by the um, behavior tree. And you can also use them outside of the behavior tree. So, yeah. Uh, okay, next I'm going to make is the AI character. So to go and do that, we're going to go blueprints, blueprint class, make a character. So a character is used for AI and players. It's actually a class that sort of can be used for all of that stuff. And uh, we need an AI controller. So this one's actually a little bit different. You can't just select uh, player controller. There's actually two different types, so if we go AI controller, you can see there it is there. And we're just going to call this one AI control. At this point, we're pretty much good. I think I'll leave it there. It might make this user interface as well. We're going to make a user interface called WB underscore in-game. This is like a little health bar that you can see in-game, and we're just going to use this to validate that our AI is actually shooting us and dealing damage. So we'll start off inside of the blackboard. You kind of want to plan out like all of the values that you'll need in your blackboard before you get to scripting your behavior tree. And so the values that I'll need, uh, the first one's going to be the enemy. Who is the enemy? And this is going to be an object, and the parent class needs to be selected as actor. Very important, make sure you check actor. And I believe instance synced means that each instance will be synced so that um, every single AI in the character will share, sorry, in a level will share this value. So the next one is a boolean called can see player. And this one's pretty obvious. It is just can we see the player or not. And this will be updated very often. Next one is going to be last seen location. This is the location that we last saw the player at, and it is a vector type. And then we're going to add one more. Oh, actually, I want a vector here. This one is going to be called search location. So if I can't find the player at his last seen location, we're going to generate a new location to look for the player, and we're going to store it in this key called search location. So Epic Games recently released this new component called the AI Perception component. Now, previously you would use the Pawn Sensing component. I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably familiar with that. 
uh, but the new one is the AI perception, which works a lot differently, and there's not a lot of documentation for it, but uh, we'll go into the AI controller. If you go to add component and type in perception, you can see that there's this perception component that's been added. And the event that we're interested in is on perception updated. And it gives you a bunch of updated actors. These are the uh, actors that have updated in our perception. And we can basically break this array apart and um, check what happened. Did we lose track of the actor? Did we see the actor? Did we hear the actor, etc. So what we'll do is every time the perception is updated, which happens very frequently, by the way, I'm going to type in a for each loop. And we're essentially just going to loop through this for each loop here. So one other thing I'll do is I'll create a variable that stores the enemy in it. Like that. And so on begin play, I'm going to get the player, which is going to be us. So if you do get player character, that's going to get our player. And then we're going to store our player inside of enemy. Because we are the enemy, basically. The next thing I'm going to do is get the blackboard. This is our blackboard that has all of our keys in it. And then we're going to set a value as object. You remember that our enemy key was actually a object. So all you have to do is just plug that into there, or you can do that. And then we're going to make a literal name here and just type out enemy because you remember the key was called enemy so what we're doing is we're taking that key enemy and setting it equal to our player okay so when our perception gets updated we're gonna loop through all the actors that were updated and we're gonna check if one of the actors that was updated is equal to my enemy so we just drag out and type in equals And then drag this into a branch. And then take our perception component and then do get actors perception. So I guess this is just getting the perception of a current actor. And the actor that we need to get the perception of is this guy. Because it was equal to our enemy. So we're basically just getting the perception of our enemy. So what you can do here is break this struct. This is a uh, actor perception blueprint info, <laughs> which is very, very weird sounding. So we're just going to get to the first sensed stimuli. And uh, for each one of your senses, you will have multiple values in here. But we, we're only going to add one sense, so we're just getting the first thing. And actually, that reminds me, if we go to the perception component here and add a sense and add a sight sense and we'll select sight as the dominant sense as well and then in the drop down here you can actually configure how far you can see his peripheral vision things like that it's actually pretty cool so what you can do here now is break this this is a AI stimulus this gives you a bunch of different information like the age the stimulus location uh, did we successfully sense and actually we're going to be using this one here successfully sensed So We're going to drag out and actually get our blackboard again because we're about to set another value in our blackboard So you get the the blackboard and we're going to set a value as bull And that value that we're going to set is can see player so if you drag out again and make another literal name you could also make variables for these, but I'm doing literal names because I'm lazy. So, can see player, I'm pretty sure I called it. I suck at names, man. I, I make these names and then I forget them. And then I have to go check and it wastes people time. Yep, can see player, okay. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> uh, okay. So, basically, successfully sensed is going to get whether or not we successfully sensed our enemy, which is us. So we just plug that in there. And so now in the behavior tree, if I want to tell if I can see the player or not, I just need to get this key here, can see player. Because this is getting updated very, very often, like probably like 10 or 20 times a second or something. 
I haven't actually looked into how often it gets called, but it's like pretty much like tick almost. So next thing we're going to do is check if we did successfully sense the enemy. And if we didn't successfully sense us, this is where we need to set our last known location. So again, we just get a blackboard, set value as vector this time. Because you remember we had that key called last known location, and that was a vector value. So you just drag up from here, make literal location, oh sorry, name. I'm way too tired right now, I'm sorry guys. So this key is going to be last seen location. And the vector value for that is going to be the location of me. So we just get the enemy, which is us, and then get the actor location of us and plug it in here. And then plug that in as false. And uh, a nice little thing that I did in my little preview video, and you guys can feel free to do this as well, is just drag out and type in draw debug sphere. And so every time that the enemy loses track of us, it's going to draw this pretty little sphere, and we're going to be able to tell where our last seen location was. We're going to get some like visual debugging going on here. So, uh, is that it? Oh yeah, we need to set up our blackboard. By default, the blackboard just, you know, it doesn't set itself up because it doesn't know what like blackboard to use and things like that. So we actually need to tell it to set up. Uh, there's this event here called on possess, and this is uh, called when the controller possesses the pawn. So what we can do is we can just drag out and type in use blackboard, and this will tell it to use a specified blackboard asset. And we're going to use this one here. And then finally, we need to run our behavior tree, which is a second node, run behavior tree. And we're going to tell it to use the behavior tree that we specified. And so I know that's not a lot of code, but that's our entire controller setup. Now, if we go back to the AI character, um, it's going to ask us to specify an AI controller. So if you click AI control, which is that new one that we made, um, that'll basically now be completely set up. The control is pretty much where you want it to be now. Uh, so, yeah. In our AI character, there is a couple things we need to set up. The first thing is it doesn't have a mesh. So if you click on mesh here, and then go... Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you guys are going to have to do something kind of annoying, but there's really no way around this. Open up the um, Epic Games Launcher and go to the Marketplace and search for Animation. And then where it says Animation Starter Pack, you'll want to grab this and import it into your project. Alright, so once it's inside of your project, you'll have this uh, folder here which has like a bunch of different animations, but most importantly, it has the mesh for like the whole body. Because since we're in a first person project, we only have the arms. So if you go back to your uh, character now, go to the mesh, click on mannequin, and then rotate him, and just move him down a bit. And of course you're going to want him to animate, otherwise he's going to look silly, so just go to this anim class, and then um, it is this one here. And now he's running around, he's got his gun. The gun doesn't have a socket to be placed in, and we actually need to add the gun still. So if you click on the mesh and go add component skeletal mesh, I'm going to call this gun mesh. And just select the gun. And the gun doesn't have any socket to go into, so it's just going to be sitting there looking all sad on the floor. So what you want to do is add a socket for the gun. So right click on your hand R, add socket, and we're going to call this weapon socket. This is the socket that our weapon's going to get attached to. And so if you right click on that and go to add preview assets, you can add the gun as a preview asset. And there you have it. So the, the gun is now attached to our player. However, it's not going to be in a very good place, as you're about to see. Notice that it is in a terrible place. So what I'm going to do is rotate the gun a bit. And that's still pretty <laughs> still pretty bad. 
come on, you. Oh my god, I'm so bad at this. Yeah, usually this takes ages to get in the right spot. So don't feel bad if you're stupid like me and it takes you like four hours. Come on. Come on, you. Oh my god. Alright, that is terrible, but I'm probably just going to take it. Because otherwise I'm going to be sitting here. Okay, that, that's good enough. Whatever. I'm happy with that. So once, you're, once you've got your socket in the right place... We can go back to the player here, and I'm just going to add something inside of the begin player. We're going to say, take the gun mesh and attach it to that socket that we created. So just do attach to component. The parent is the mesh. The socket name, I think I called it weapon socket. And the location, snap, snap, snap. Perfect. So, um, if you drag our little buddy here into the level and go down to simulate, he should be holding the gun in the game now. So, that's what we're looking for. Okay, we're going to add quite a bit of setup now. Uh, we'll add a event called Shoot Enemy. And this is just going to shoot a player. If we go to inputs, I'm going to add a actor. Oh, come on. Actor. Please, let me type. Thank you. Alright, there we go. So we're going to add an actor <clears throat> and uh, call this enemy to shoot. This means that later on you can pass in different enemies to shoot rather than just our player. Since it's now a parameter. And then we're going to add one more event. This one's actually even simpler. This is just going to be play shoot fx. So if you guys remembered, my uh, AI's gun had like an explosion that happened every time he shot a bullet. And so to do that, we're just going to spawn an emitter at a location. And the emitter is going to be the explosion. And we're just going to take our gun mesh. Take the location of the muzzle, and take the rotation of the muzzle. And there's actually a socket already on the gun called muzzle. So, all you need to do is just put in socket, like that. And go ahead and plug these in here. And there you have it. So, that is the uh, gunshot handled and now we need to do the actual ray casting stuff so whenever I shoot an enemy the first thing we're gonna do is just play the shoot effects and then the next thing we're gonna do is line trace by channel the start point is going to be the AI characters location so you can just type get actor location and the endpoint is going to be my location. So we just simply take the enemy to shoot, get the location of our enemy, and that's where we want to shoot. Now, this is going to be perfectly accurate. It's going to hit whatever you're trying to hit every single time. So one way to fix that is you can just roll a random number. So just get a random number in range, and then you can use that. So it's like a chance-based thing. So you could do like generate a random number from 0 to 100, if the number is over 50, then do the line trace. If the number's under 50, then just play the shoot effects. And what that'll do is it'll just make it look like the bot missed you, basically. Uh, there are other different ways to do this as well. You could offset this location so he misses. It's really up to you. But uh, I'm just making a 100% accurate bot. You'll probably want to change that in your final game, obviously. So the next thing to do is see if we hit something. So you just simply just type branch out from here. Break the hit result. And what we're going to do is we're going to check if the hit actor, if the thing we hit was equal to the enemy. Because if we just hit a wall or something, then obviously we don't want to deal damage to the player. We only want to deal damage to the player if we actually hit the player. So if you just plug that into another branch, then what we can do now is we can apply damage. So Unreal has a generic function called apply damage, which is just used to damage any generic actor that inherits, or sorry, that implements the take damage function. 
So we can say that the damaged actor was the player. We want to deal, say, 20 damage. The instigator of the damage was the AI's controller. The causer of the damage was the AI. So that would just be self. And then the damage type class, just go with damage type. If you want to have custom damage types, you can implement these and then select them from this dropdown. Um, but since we're not really caring about custom damage types, we're just going to go with uh, this custom or this normal damage type here. So at this point, if I call this function right here, this will actually damage my character. My character will take damage if I call this function and pass my character in as the enemy to shoot. Alright, so the thing I want to set up now is my behavior tree. So how do we set up the behavior tree? First thing I'm going to do is use a selector. A selector is going to try to execute children of the selector. However, as soon as something succeeds, it will stop, I believe. Uh, usually there's some help text that... there you go. Yeah, so once something succeeds, it will stop, and then it will just go back to the start um, because of the way that we've set it up. So we're going to drag out to a sequence. Now a sequence is the complete opposite of a selector. So the selector will stop when something succeeds, the sequence will stop when something fails. And we're going to add a decorator, blackboard. You can think of this as just a quick null check. So we're just making sure can see player is set. Can we see the player, basically. So this is just saying only do this sequence if we can actually see the player. If we can't see the player, this sequence here is not going to fire and it's just going to move to the next um, thing that we drag up from here. And nodes on a behavior tree are executed from left to right. And you can actually see the order using these little numbers here. This is called the execution index. So what I'm going to do is just recreate my original tree. So what I did was I waited for 0 0.1 seconds just for a little bit of randomness. There's a custom task already made for you called rotate to face BB entry, which will rotate to face a blackboard entry. And it's already set up for the enemy, so we'll just select enemy. So it's just going to rotate to face my character. And we can change the node name here. I'm just going to say rotate to face enemy. Again, just so it doesn't look super robotic, I'm going to wait for 0 0.1 seconds. And you can actually, there's a cool feature where you can add random deviation, so you can make it a different amount of waiting each time if you want. I'm then going to attack, and there is no attack task. I need to make a custom task for that, so we're going to click on new task. And then here I'm just going to call this attack. And then finally, once I've attacked, I'm just going to wait for, say, one second. And I'll show you how random deviation can be used here. So I'm going to wait for one second with a random deviation of 0 0.5 seconds. So this will either be plus or minus five seconds. And if I click on this and then go to abort self, what this means is that at any point that he's trying to shoot the player, if he loses sight of the player, he's going to stop doing this stuff immediately and he's going to abort and move on to the next um, thing that we drag up from here. So it's actually quite a handy feature to have for controlling AI logic. So what I need here is another sequence. And so this one is handling chasing the player and finding search locations. So on this part, I'm just going to move to the player's last known location. At this point, if he finds the player, he's going to jump back here. If he doesn't find the player, he's going to go to the next task. And the way that I do that is I add another decorator, blackboard, and I'm going to say enemy is not set. So we're only doing this stuff here if we can't see the enemy. And we're going to use that abort self thing again. So that at any point during this stuff, if I see the enemy, leave this abort, and it's going to come here and start doing this stuff, shooting. We need another custom task here. This custom task is going to uh, look for a location that we can search for the player. So you click on new task, select blueprint base. I'm going to rename this one to 
find search point. And so we can just drag out and do find search point. And we'll know that it successfully found a search point because we're going to use another one of our little decorators. So you just do uh, add decorator blackboard search location is set. So this is actually going to make sure we've found a search location and then it's going to move to that search location rather than just moving to a search location that we might not even have. So I'm going to say move to, which is another one of those generic tasks that's actually included for you. And then we're going to move there if the search location is set, which I guess we don't need to do because it's only going to do it if it's true there anyway. And then finally we'll wait for say two seconds with a random deviation of one second. So just add a little bit more randomness in there. And that is the complete logic for our tree. You'll notice though that we did add those uh, two tasks, attack and find search point, and we haven't implemented anything in those. So to implement uh, the custom tasks, what you need to do is right click, uh, or you can just go to functions actually and go to override. And we're gonna select receive execute AI. Okay, so we'll, go, we'll start off with our attack function. Our attack function is pretty simple because we already made that function called shoot enemy. So we're pretty much just calling that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by casting to our AI character that we made. We're gonna get the blackboard of the controller because we're about to set a key. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the value of the key enemy. So we're just finding the enemy that the bot's currently trying to kill. And then what we do is we say shoot that enemy. And oh yes, this needs to be casted to an actor. And because we know it is an actor for sure, we are absolutely certain it's an actor, we can actually just right click and go convert to pure cast like that. And then plug that in there. So what that's going to do is it's going to get the enemy and call the shoot enemy function using our enemy as the enemy to shoot. And as you'll remember, we set the enemy key to our player, so it's going to try shoot our player. Uh, what you need to do, because this is how behavior trees is set up, is you need to run this uh, function called finish execute and then say that it was a success. If I tried to get my AI character but I couldn't, then we're going to finish execute, but leave that empty, which means failed. And then we'll start off with, um, in the find search point, this one's a little bit more complicated. Uh, I will explain how it works. So again, we just need to override our execute AI. We're going to get the blackboard from our AI. And so we're going to get the enemy, cast him to an actor. And again, I know that um, the enemy is an actor, so I can just pure cast it as well. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the last scene location, because the way that we're searching for a new location is by using the last scene location. We're kind of basing it off the, the place that we last saw the enemy, which makes sense, right? If you're looking for someone, you search for them using their last known location. Okay. So we're going to get the location of the enemy. We're going to add the last known location and our current location together. You might be thinking, how would the bot know where I am? Well, the bot shouldn't really know where you are, but this is just a, a nice, clean, easy piece of logic that we can do. We can take the last scene location, take your current location, 
and then just search somewhere in the middle of that. And we can do that by dividing by two. So divide by two. And this will return some point that's like kind of near where you are, but not really. Like if you got far enough away from the last same location, the AI is probably still not going to find you. Uh, the AI would be very, very good if you added like uh, audio so we can hear you as well. And you can do that. I already showed you how to add that back in the senses thing. You just add a hearing uh, sense as well. So the real cool thing that we can do here is this function called get random point and navigable radius. This is a really nice function. This is going to take our nav mesh and it's going to find a random point in the mesh, but only a point that we can walk to. So super nice function. And I'm just going to say 1000. Find a, a radius 1000, maybe like 3000 actually. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to say. Well, I'll do 2000. Why not? And you don't need to worry about nav data or filter class. Okay, so at this point we can drag out here and we're going to actually, let me think, I'm going to drag out from here and we're going to set a value as vector because now we're setting our search location. So we just make a literal name and type in search location. And we're going to set the... Oh, did I do get value? Whoops. My bad. We're going to do set value as vector. There we have it. Plug that in all the way back there. You can see we're doing a ton of pure logic. And then there's not really much uh, white wires going around here. But once we've done that, we know that we found a point to go to. So just do finish execute and tell it that it succeeded. I mean, this should always succeed, basically. I did have some problems with navigable radius, and I'll explain how to fix those in a sec. But it's really easy to fix. Okay, so you'll notice that we're using this move to node here. Now, there is a problem with move to. Move to assumes that we have a nav mesh inside of our level, and we don't have one of those right now. So if you go to the modes panel and then go to volumes, you can see we have a nav mesh bounds volume. You drag that in and you can edit that box to basically just stretch over your entire level. And this is a nav mesh, so it's just going to um, generate points that the bot can walk to. And you'll know that you've set up your nav mesh right because you can press P on your keyboard and that will show you all of the points that the bot can walk to on the nav mesh, which is actually a real nice feature. And you can turn that off by just pressing P again. Alright. And also, because I'm stupid and I'm tired, I forgot that uh, this should actually be can see player and not enemy. So just make sure that that's can see player is not set. And also one thing that's actually built into blueprints is under the AI perception, there's this detection by affiliation, which is actually a cool feature, but it trips a lot of people up. So the bot is set up to detect enemies, neutrals, and friendlies. And so that means like if you're on its team, it's not going to start shooting you. But if you're not on its team, it's going to start shooting you. Uh, but in Blueprints, this isn't really supported very well. Just make sure all of these are checked. So that way it's definitely going to detect you. Otherwise, you're probably going to have some problems. It's going to think you're a neutral or a friendly, and it won't detect you. So just make sure you check all of those. In fact, if you want to have it perfectly working, just copy what I have here, and you can tangle with settings later on. Uh, one thing I might do is maybe ramp this peripheral vision up a wee bit though, maybe make it like 130. So that way he can see you very, very well, like he has a very large peripheral vision. Uh, if that was 360, I think, that is going to be the whole ramp, like he's going to be able to see you from anywhere, which wouldn't make sense. So yeah, uh, you, you can adjust this to do whatever you want, basically. It's up to you. See if it works. Oh, it looks like he's shooting me. Now, uh, you'll notice it looks kind of dodgy because he, like, turns all at once. If you're really worried about this, which you probably should be in your own game, make it so that he uses the Rinterp node, which will smoothly turn him <laughs> rather than just, like, insta-teleporting, rotating. But 
again, this is kind of just an example to like help you get set up. Um, one thing that I, I'm not 100% sure if it'll affect it or not, but I went to the capture component and also turned my collision presets to custom and then turned visibility to block because I'm not sure if he detects you using the visibility channel, but I just did it anyway. Uh, okay, so let's get the HUD on the screen because that's kind of the how we tell if he's actually hitting us or not. So on begin play, just type in begin play and on begin play we're going to get the player controller. Create a widget. Add the widget that we created to the viewport. That's all you need to do. And um, when we take damage, because remember the bot inflicts damage to us, so if you type in damage, there's this event any damage. We'll create a variable called health. Make this a float. We're going to, um, let's see here. We're going to set health equal to health minus the damage. That's all you need to do. And to set up the HUD, I'm going to go to the HUD, drag in a progress bar. I'll make it red because generally red is health. And then bind the percentage. And we're going to bind the percentage to the player's health. So to do that, you get the player character, cast it to a uh, first person character. Get the health value. And then because health is 0 to 100, but the percentage bar is 0 to 1, you need to divide by 100 to have a usable value. We need to set our health to be a default of 100. So click on health, 100, and there you have it. Alright, so he's dealing damage to us, which is good. Um, so let's set up a little maze and see if we can run away from him. See if he follows us. So you can make a maze however you want. I'm just going to duplicate these things. I don't really care about making anything crazy good right now. Hit play. And start running away, although he's probably going to be too good. Uh, he's pretty good. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Oh, God. And I'm dead. You can see he's pretty damn good. In your own game, you're probably going to want... Like, that would be like expert difficulty level bot or something. In your own game, though, you'll probably make it so that your bot misses a lot of shots, but I don't know. That's up to you. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. This is just a quick video. I wanted to get something out because it's been like a month and I feel bad, so... Uh, and I like making the videos, but I've had so much on, so... Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment if you want me to cover something else or if you just want help. See you guys later.